chance to meet with me via Zoom. I'm really excited to explain the process to you. So like yeah. I said, this is just going to be a quick consultation. Um, before we start any processes, I like to do what is called a buyer's uh, presentation with you. And I have this really cool package that I normally would have printed out, but I have it on my screen right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share screen. Okay. And once while I do that, just know I'm really excited to meet with you. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to learn. Yes, absolutely. So my priority is to inform you as a buyer. I okay. want you, by the time we finish this meeting, to be 100% confident into what you're getting into. And I'm also going to be very realistic, okay, with the current market and give you current updates. Yeah. Um, that sounds great. Let me know once it starts to work. Let me know when you can see that. Test, test, test. It says you have started share screening. Perfect. Awesome. I I can see see it it now. Awesome. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, so um, so Chicago Rosie Partners, that's my team, we're for KW, obviously. But what I really want to explain to you is um, you know certain processes. So I'm going to start off with the basics and um, yeah, let's get started. Awesome. So when you're home doing the home search, I'm sure you've heard of new construction homes. Mm -hmm. You probably have passed a few of these signs, maybe not in this market, but I'm sure you've seen a for sale by owners. Home before, remember? Yeah. Probably. Okay. The cool thing is about the new construction homes is that you can still contact me prior to going to view them. The way I see it is kind of like going to a car lot without getting your pre-approved loan first. Mm -hmm. You know, buying a car, you know, the loan sharks that they have on site, they're going to look out for their own interests. Mm -hmm. so if you go with your own information and representation of a bank already, they kind of view you differently. They respect you a bit more. Um, have you ever had a chance to do that? Yeah, not not with a home, but with a car. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, going to a car lot, they treat you differently. You're not, yeah. uh, you know, they can't trick you as easily. The same thing, you know, we go in there and as soon as they see you have an agent, this market's a little bit different, but typically they're like, well, like, cause we can take you back at any time. Mm -hmm. They typically want to throw in a little bit extra, you know, be a little bit more kinder, explain things a lot more thoroughly that they, than they would if uh, I wasn't there. Mm. Because I already know uh, working in real estate, what they should be telling you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you ever want to see any construction homes, I'm already going to be letting you know what's coming up and if that's even a idea of yours, but you told me that you weren't looking for that earlier, but just to let you know, if you do change your mind, mm -hmm. I will gladly take you. Do not go without me. Just give me a call. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Also for sale by owner signs, do not call them directly. Okay. Um, people that sell their own home, it's very tricky to do so. And you know, 95% of for sale by owners end up listing after attempting themselves. Wow. Yeah. And, and I'm just so you know, a for sale by owner is never going to be a realtor because a realtor would jump on the opportunity to advertise ourselves. So we'd have our own faces on our lawn and you better believe That's it. That's so true. Yeah, so don't, so they pretend to be all like, I know what I'm doing, but do they really? So uh, just go ahead and give me the information. I know how to negotiate with them prior, you know, properly and um, to avoid a headache and stress of you talking to someone that's gonna be, yeah, you know, it's just, let's just avoid that. But I just wanna just like quickly show you the signs and go over this part. Um, I'm just going to skip over a little bit. I usually go into my mission and vision um, and values that we have here on our team, but that's something you can read over. I'm going to email you a copy of this when we're done. Okay. And um, you already know a little bit of my, my value system, you know, care, serve, give. I love giving back, working with vets. You know, I help the veteran that you know mm -hmm. buy a house, so that works. Yes. This is some more belief systems here. Now, we're going to get into the good stuff, okay? The home buying process. You had called me saying, I'm interested in buying a home. And I stopped you there and said, let's meet first. Yeah. You're like, what do I do next? I'm like, let's meet first. I don't know anything. Yeah. You don't know anything, which is, which is good because you don't have like any pre-programmed ideas of what it's going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the home buying process broken down step-by-step step, and I'm going to start off. Okay. The way I compare home buying is kind of like dating. So right now you're probably thinking about dating, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to start, you know, downloading apps. So the first step is select a real estate agent. And that's why we're talking here. Cause I know you're going to probably pick me. <laughs> so of course I'm here, pick mm -hmm. me. <laughs> so after you've selected the, that, which you already have, you're going to obtain a financial pre-approval. That's the next step. You kind of like talk to me about like some lending companies that you knew about, mm -hmm. but here's the thing. I don't want you to go with a bank because the bank's going to look out for themselves and they have their own interest rates. Oh. Um, when you go with the lending broker, like a lender, 
Um, I remember you, you saw my office. We have a, a preferred lender here, but um, they are lending brokers. What they do is that they talk and communicate with up to like 300 banks. Wow. So okay. What they do is that they get your information and say, I have this person who can give me the best interest rates. Show me what you got. They qualify for this amount. Um, what can you give me? The good thing about the lender I'm going to send you to is that it's more than just a pre-approval letter because you can go on any website, Quicken Loans, and get like a an estimate and they give you a letter. But the authenticity behind it is they don't know your financial situation. So how, mm-hmm. how thorough is that letter? How accurate is that? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you if you're going to work with me to trust my guidance. I'll give you multiple options that you can use, of course. If you have a friendship with someone, of course, I want to look them up. But um, if not, you don't know anyone. You told me you didn't know anyone. So I'll go ahead and connect you with my preferred lender. And he'll go ahead and look at your situation mm-hmm. and see kind of what you're qualified for. That's awesome. That makes sense. So that'd be like the next step. As soon as we're done with this, um, I'll send you his info. But I didn't want to just send you to him because I'll be honest with you, Caitlin, like 95% of realtors don't sit down and have this conversation. What they do is they get super excited. I have a buyer. My cousin wants to buy a house. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, um, are you pre-approved? Perfect. Let's start getting homes. I don't care. Even if you were pre-approved, I would still have this conversation with you. Mm-hmm. It does not mean that you're so educated on the process. Yeah. Um, what's awesome is you haven't got pre-approved yet, so I can properly guide you so you're not stuck with a, a bank that's going to, you know, I don't know how to say it properly in a different way, screw you over essentially, you know? Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. So that's pretty much it um, as far as that goes. So like I said, it's kind of like dating. You're thinking about downloading apps, right? So you've probably already been on Zillow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Searching. No. no, it's okay. Like you've been on Zillow, but um, the way that Zillow works, Caitlin, is that they are a data capture company. Okay. The way that Zillow makes money is that they, well, me, for example, I can purchase leads from them. So anyone that clicks and fills out information, that information is then sold to realtors, to cold oh, wow. So I would call and say, hey, you're clicking online. Are you interested in buying a home? That's mm-hmm. one way. There's two ways to make money, like I said earlier. The second way is I could pay to be a premier agent. Mm-hmm. What that means is that they pick actual listed properties and some of them are already sold or expired. They do it for clicks and views. And I could be paid to be featured right next to the property. So even oh. though it's not my home that's for sale, my information will be on there. Really? Yes. So like m- the majority of the time when you see an agent on the website, that's not the person that has it listed. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that's a secret I have for you. So the good thing is I have an app myself that I can send you. And um, as soon as we get that pre-approval back, so I'll send you the app so you can like look at it at night. I wish I could show you over the screen, um, but we'll meet in person. I'll show it to you, but it's an app. It's free. And one promise I have is that it's going to have you fill out some questions, of course, Mm -hmm. but I am the only person that will be seeing your information. Awesome. KW has a data pledge. That means that any information that I put into my system and my clients put in, that data is protected and never sold. That's awesome. That makes me trust the process a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm going to send you this app. I apologize if I'm freezing. No, you're doing good. There's okay. no lag at all. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and send you that app and you can go at night and look at homes and it kind of works like a Yelp. You can look at any city, area, price. Um, but once we get that pre-approval letter, mm-hmm. that's when you're going to want to, like, they'll give me a more accurate estimate of what price you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So then I can go into my MLS that Realtors use mm-hmm. and set you up to receive homes directly from there to your email. Awesome. You'll have uh, those coming in and then the app to go on. Perfect. So like, so you're going to be downloading like dating apps, you know, so you're thinking about dating. Yeah. You're finally going to like throw yourself out there. You have all the apps. So what's next? You're going to start swiping for houses, right? Left and mm-hmm. right. Kind of like you were on Tinder or Bumble, whatever is out there these days, right? So you start like swiping, looking for homes. So I'm giving you the Tinder of mm-hmm. apps, all right, yes. which is my KW app. And the next step would be to analyze your needs in a buyer's consultation. Mm-hmm. We're doing that right now. The mm-hmm. next time that we have a conversation, it's going to be about needs and wants in a home. Okay. So that's the next step. So then... We're gonna start selecting properties. You're gonna you can either like them on the app, screenshot them. If that doesn't work, just screenshot them, send them to me in text, or screenshot the email or respond to email, forward it to me. Any mm-hmm. way that you want, any home that interests you, mm-hmm. go ahead and send them this way. Okay. Um, this market, I'm gonna let you know, is not the typical market. Okay. Every home is getting a, about like 20 to 30 offers to be wow. realistic with you. Wow. I do not want you to be discouraged because the interest rates are very low and it's a great time to buy. And mm-hmm. with your situation, it does make sense to purchase a home, not mm-hmm. rent, right? 
So I don't want to get discouraged, but I do want to let you know, realistically, it's going to take multiple offers and multiple homes to get you into something. Mm -hmm. So my rule is please do not fall in love with them. Okay. Can I ask you right. a question? Yeah, please ask questions. Yes. So um, you said this isn't a typical market. That's good to know. But what is the typical market? So if, say, I was buying a home a year or two ago, what would the typical market look like? So a typical market a year or two ago would be people wanted, they would do anything. The seller would do repairs. They would like throw on a fridge, microwave, all the, they pull out all the stops because they're barely getting views on their homes and they really want to sell, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, the, a market that we used to be in. Okay. I predict we're going to be in this type of market for a bit. So yeah. even for the next year, I don't see the shifting. Oh, I don't fall in love. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't see the shifting. But the good thing is, Caitlin, like you, you're working with a great team. Like mm -hmm. we're going to make it happen. Um, but luckily for us here at KW, like a lot of our agents are super collaborative mm -hmm. and they're really great about like letting me know what they have coming up next. So to see what we can like, you know, preview and kind of get our foot in the door with certain listings that are be popping up. So if we're viewing homes, you know, this upcoming weekend or next weekend, I'm going to ask you not to send me any properties. Mm -hmm. um, and so is it my freezing or no? Yeah, no, 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 you're good. Okay. <laughs> so if we're viewing homes. Um, on a Saturday, like next Saturday, for example, do not send me homes this weekend or Monday. Okay. They're going to be gone by then. Oh, okay. And I'm just being realistic, okay? Don't fall in love with them. It's okay. I do see more homes coming on, but I just want to be realistic. Okay. Once That's we start good. selecting properties, right? So mm -hmm. you're swiping on these apps, kind of like dating. Mm -hmm. You start selecting them. You start seeing what's kind of your type, <laughs> right? What do I even want? What's my type? So then... We're going to start viewing properties, and that's what I call going on dates. Okay. We're going to go on dates and not fall in love with them, okay. right? <laughs> Try but, 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 it's okay, but it's okay, all right? Um, the first day that we go out to view properties, mm -hmm. it's okay for us to make an offer the first time we go out. Wow. Okay. So I need to be ready. Yeah. So you can be ready. It's okay to do that because the type of market we're in, you're going to see they're going by fast. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to like rush you or discourage you. You do seem like to be wanting, you, you seem like you're in a rush of it, mm -hmm. right? You want to buy something soon. I'm ready. So, but that being said, you are ready. We're going to write offers day of even, okay. but that's depending on you. If you're happy, you want it, we'll write the offer for you. Okay. We'll make it okay. happen. A lot of negotiating is going into this market that we're in. Like I said, do not be discouraged if we're making multiple offers and they're not getting accepted or not hearing back. Cause a lot of these sellers agents um, are getting lucky. A lot of these listing agents I'm noticing are very new to the industry and they haven't done a lot of listings. So that means that they're not doing a lot of proper follow-up, but don't worry. I will do my due diligence and I promise you, you have my word that I will follow up relentlessly as much as I can. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to go be properties, go on dates. We're going to write an offer to purchase. Um, what happens is if our offer, you know, gets accepted, we negotiate terms. When negotiating terms is kind of before it gets accepted, we negotiate terms and you see that written there. What mm -hmm. that means is that they're sending us like a counter typically. Okay. Uh, typically they'd be like, okay, like we like this, but we can't do that. Like I want to close in 30 days. And in this market, we're seeing a lot of waiving their appraisal, right? Whether it's allowed or not, we're seeing a lot of that. So yeah. that's when we negotiate terms. I go back and say, okay, they want to do this. Um, instead of 17 days, I'll, I'll explain it to you later. All right, it's coming up soon. Um, so 70 days, we'll, we'll do the 10 day. We can, we can handle all the inspections in 10 days to save okay. your seller a week, stuff like that. We negotiate terms. We're happy with it. You're happy with it. That's when we accept the contract. Okay. Perfect. Yay. Okay. The way, that so sense. that, yeah. So that being said, like, you know, you're going on dates. We write an offer, negotiate terms. You're asking them to be your girlfriend. Oh, pressure. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're asking them to be your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they be, that's when you become hooked a bit so it doesn't mean that you're fully married right mm -hmm. so that's what happens here so you accept the contract you're kind of getting engaged almost okay okay so earlier reviewing property you're dating or writing an offer so you're asking them to be yours mm -hmm. for negotiating terms because you're learning that person you're learning that you're learning what you want in this home and yeah. what to make this deal happen and then when you accept the contract you're getting engaged so when you accept the contract what's happening is two things that's when an EMD is going to come out. An EMD is an earnest money deposit, which mm -hmm. is one percent purchase price that goes towards your escrow. Okay? okay, it's a deposit. You will get this back. Okay. All right. Um, 
that is a one percent purchase price due. That's going to come out, and um, that's what that's going to happen. So that's the earnest money deposit, the EMD, and the second thing that happens is the seventeen dash. Now I want to go back to the EMD. The reason why we're putting money down mm -hmm. is because you're telling the seller, "Hey, in full faith, I'm going to purchase your home." Okay. So here's a deposit, right? Because you know, if you think about it, if they put pending. Have you seen pending online on Zillow? Yeah. Have you ever seen like pending or in escrow? That means that they're in contract. They accepted a contract. Okay. So when it says pending or in escrow, that's what they, what's happening in escrow is that they just only have one percent of purchase due, and they're about to do the seventeen day thing. Okay. And it's like you're it's you're telling the seller because they're losing possible clients, they're losing marketing because they're taking it off the market essentially for us. Mm -hmm. So when I say hey, in full faith, here's this down payment. If everything goes well in the 17 days, I'm going to buy your home. Okay. But it's still contingent, okay? So that's mm -hmm. contingent. I'm going to buy your home contingent that the loan approval, home insurance quote, and appraisal goes the way I want. Okay. okay. All right. So, yay, accept the contract. Earnest money deposit. You're going to send that money, which I saw. You told me financially you have a lot saved. That's mm -hmm. good, okay? Mm -hmm. That's only 1% due for your situation, probably like $3,000. Mm -hmm. But that's money you get back and it goes towards your escrow. So don't worry about that. Okay. So in the 17 days, this has to happen. You're going to get a full loan approval. So you know how I told you in the beginning that you're getting pre-approved? Mm -hmm. So pre-approved means that the bank's saying, hey, okay, Caitlin qualifies for about this much. We'll, we'll give her that much. Okay. Let's just say she qualifies that much. We'll be able to give that to her eventually. Um, a full loan approval is a bank looking, saying, hey, moving the money aside for you. Mm -hmm. saying, wow, okay, she actually does qualify for 435. Let's move it over, get it ready to go for her. Like it's 100% okay. 435 written. Here's her check right here for you. And when can your loan amount change from the pre-approval to when it actually goes through? Um, yes, it can. So um, In a good way or a bad way? Yeah, so here's the thing. Like it's, it's going to be based on what you feel comfortable with. So mm -hmm. a good lender, a really good lender is going to ask you what you want to pay monthly. Okay. They're not going to look at your financial situation and be like, give her this much money, 600000 mm -hmm. because we don't want you to be stuck with the mortgage you're not comfortable paying. Mm -hmm. Even if you could qualify for $600,000, do we want you paying almost four grand a month? No. Mm -hmm. For a mortgage? No. <laughs> so you say you feel comfortable paying about like $2,300, $2,400, you know? Mm -hmm. They would take that information based off of that, say, okay, you could buy up to four twenty five. But say that we're looking at the home search and you fall in love with the home that's four fifty. D, 450 mm -hmm. right he can bring up your limit if you want okay. that's good to know so, don't worry he could always relook at your loan and be like yep you know what she did qualify for this much but the only reason we said this much is because she wanted to pay a certain amount so you can always go back and adjust that so it's very true awesome. you can also always you can also lose a loan by messing up your credit and okay. i'll get into that in a bit and you're not going to do that okay. <laughs> and the second thing i'm going to ask you to do is get a home insurance quote caitlin Okay. So once like the loan approval happens, like Tano, that's my guy or whoever you pick is going to be reaching out to you, mm -hmm. you know, recertifying certain information and documents. The good thing about his team is that he basically does that in the beginning. In that pre-approval, he already asks you for a lot of the majority of things so that you're not stressing the heck out in the 17 dash. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing that you're going to do is get a home insurance quote. You can get it with your car insurance per people. Maybe they can okay. bundle it. The reason why you want to get a quote, Caitlin, is why? Do you want to know why? So that way I know what my expenses are going to be? Kind of. Like, that's kind of it. But the reality of it is that a lot of people do not know that a home, once it has a claim on it, whether it's water damage, earthquake, whatever it may be, it stays with that home forever. Oh. Increasing your rate. Okay. Yeah. So if there's ever a claim on that home, they're going to look into it. So the history, whenever it was built, 1960s, 70s, whatever, 90s, whenever it was built to the day that today, there's, they're going to have record of everything that's been claimed. Wow. And why that matters to you is because what if there's like so much water damage claim that it makes your, in your insurance $100 a month? Right. That's when we're going to care. Huh. Right? That is good to know. Yeah. So, but if it's like 15 and 20 bucks a month, like a little extra, like we're not going to really stress about it, especially if it's a really happy home that you love. Yeah. But I'm just concerned that if, what if it's an extra thousand premium because the home has, is so old. So you never know. And it's for your safety to understand what you're looking at. Okay. Um, that. So yeah, just so you know, home insurance claims stay with the home forever. Awesome. All right. So the third thing that comes in is an appraisal. 
an appraisal. I, I like to put the money amount here. Some people don't. I do because I want you to know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. An appraisal is going to, you're looking at around $500. Okay. Um, an appraisal is mandatory. Like that is through the bank. Mm -hmm. An appraiser comes in, looks at the value of the home and says what it is. And that's it. We have no choice. It's a third party person that has nothing to do with the seller or buyer. We don't get to pick them. But what, what do you, who do you think the appraisal is protecting? Like, who are they there to protect? Um, I mean, I would think more so the buyer because somebody that wants to sell their home, if there's something wrong with it, they're like, yeah, get it off my hands. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good guess, but no. Okay. The appraiser is actually, no, no, it's fine. Trust me. I get like the most random answers. Like people okay. always think it's a seller actually. Okay. And a lot of people or some people get the buyer. No, but actually I've only had one person guess this right. The appraiser is only there to protect the bank. They can oh, care less about you, me, who's, they are like the, you ever seen Ratatouille? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the food critic? Yeah. <laughs> That's them. <laughs> They're there to protect the bank. They want to make sure that this, this is like, they care about their money. Banks are greedy. They want to make sure that the home is worth that amount. Uh, like if I'm going to give her 435, I'm going to make sure this home is worth 435. Okay. And then they're going to go there or they could go there and be like, no, it's only worth 425. We're only going to give her 425 for this. Mm-hmm. Because it's not worth a num another dollar of our pennies or whatever. And that's yeah. actually what's happening in this market is that a people are waving at appraisals, so um, saying that they'll pay the difference. So if their bank comes in and says it's 425, mm -hmm. they're saying, I'm willing to pay 50000 over for it. And that's the market we're in, and I see it being like that for a while. Okay. So that's okay because it doesn't mean you're overpaying for a home. You still would have paid 435 whether it was a loan or cash. Mm -hmm. It's just more money going immediately into your equity. Okay. So put the money down. Do not be afraid that you're like, oh, I have to pay $10,000 over. Not really. You're just paying that towards your equity. Mm -hmm. so it's home equity, Caitlin, is, is, it's, it's not a liability. So a home is not a li liability. Mm -hmm. It's like a savings account if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of refinancing? Yeah. A lot I don't of people, know a lot about it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. So refinancing, you hear that term, it's something you can do. It's when they, an appraiser will go back in a different market. Um, and they can reanalyze like your loan, even lower your rate eventually if you want it, but, or it stays the same, but you can pull out equity during that process. So you're allowed to, and in, I'm sorry if I'm freezing. No, you're, you're allowed you're to. Good. Okay. You are allowed to, you froze on my end. So, oh. sorry. <laughs> so you are allowed to pull out money. So equity is not a loss. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have this fear because it is a lot of money. Like, oh, like that's grand and all this stuff. And I'm like, but that's your money. That's your savings account. If you think about it, where you're renting, you're paying their mortgage. So the average rent price right now is what? Like two grand for yeah. a home? Yeah, like two for a home, it's like 2,600. So in 12 months, you already pay $25,000. Yeah. That's $25,000 and people don't, it's not until they sit down and do the math that they realize how much you're genuinely paying someone else. Yeah. That goes yeah. towards your equity. And it doesn't mean like, it, like people see like, oh, I'm paying my loan, whatever. No, that's your money. That's your equity that you're earning. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's really important. So the appraisal is mandatory third-party person that comes in. All right. The next thing that is not mandatory, but if you're working with me, you're still going to do this. Even if they say they're not going to repair anything, we're still going to do this is a home inspection. Yeah. So the home inspector is going to go in and look at things like the roof. They're going to check for any mold. They're going to look at, you know, pavement is uneven. Like they're mm -hmm. looking at things in a way that you and I would not look at them. Cause we're be like, oh my yeah. God, home, right? Well, now I, I've been in this industry so long, I'd start to look at things like that now. But yeah. you, the average person will be like, and I'm not talking about there's a crack in, this door's not closing all the way. Like the cabinet's pink, like not. Nah. Really? They're, they're gonna look at, <laughs> they're gonna look at the, the, they're gonna nitty and gritty. Look at the, especially like looking at the roof is a big one. They're gonna look for termites, stuff like that. Um, they don't do, they, one inspection may lead to another though. Okay. So the home inspector may come in and say, that roof's not looking right. You should get someone to come look at it. Okay. So then we'd have to do another, you know what I mean? Or okay. if a home's so older. The home inspection is like the general practitioner. And then like, they're like, you need to go see the specialist for your feet yes. or something like that. Yes. Okay. That and then when a, when a home inspector goes in there, um, they're going to tell you a lot of things. They're mm -hmm. going to give you a long report with so many findings. Mm -hmm. Don't get scared or overwhelmed because we even sold a new construction home, a new construction home, and we still did a home inspection and we still got a list of things wow. wrong. 
Wow. So think about that. And that's good. That's amazing. They're a great inspector. It does not mean it's anything. Your your job, and we'll explain it to you when we go through it with you, is all we care about is anything that's serious. Mm-hmm. Like if a roof needs to be replaced, that's 30 grand almost. Mm-hmm. You know? We're looking for serious like things, water damage or like just uh, safety concerns is my thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like black mold, for example, is a big yeah. one. Things like that is what we care about. If they have like some termite damage, that's fine. Um, also for certain homes that are older than a certain year, we mm-hmm. automatically are going to do a termite inspection too. So depending on what we're looking at, I'm going to send a termite inspector to go out and then a home inspector. For termite, it's like about, it's less than a hundred bucks. Okay. Awesome. To get that checked and it's worth it because if you want to get a home fumigated, it's better we do it before you move in. You know what I mean? Then have yeah. all your I want stuff. all those boxes checked to make sure everything's good to go. So I yeah. like Exactly. So that's essentially what's going to happen in this amount. So okay. they accepted the contract and we said, we're going to buy your home contingent on the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, during this time, Kayla, I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to be very stressed. You're very <laughs> okay. stressed because it's like planning a wedding. Stressful. Yeah, you, yeah. You're going to be very stressed because, um, you know, like I said, you're thinking about dating. So you get excited, you get hopeful, you find review properties, you want, you write an offer, you get committed to this person. Now you're accepting the contract, you're getting engaged. So the way I explain the 17 day dash is that you start doing your background check, you start meeting the family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I really vibe with them. So that's when we dig deep and say, do I align with their morals? Mm-hmm. How is this going to look? Um, it's kind of like that. You're doing that with the home. You're like, oh my God, like what's their background with the home insurance quote? Mm-hmm. You know, what does this person think of them, this third party person, the appraiser, right? That's not going to be biased. Not one of your friends are going to ask someone else about this person. And then the home inspection is getting to the nitty gritty and like digging deep and looking at things thoroughly to see if you're a fit, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I know like I have this silly way of comparing it to things, but to me, it just helps people understand it better. Yeah. So there's that. So after we accept the contract, we're going to remove contingencies. So that means we're happy with everything that happened. We're going to move forward. Okay. Um, during this time, you're going to hear from um, your lending team again, just to make sure everything's in order. We're going to conduct like a, a title search and obtain title insurance, mm-hmm. um, conduct any inspections. This is like a time when we do like a final walkthrough is we're going to go to the home and make sure it's in the same condition that it was in when we first went there. Okay. Okay. Cause we went there and all of a sudden there's a big hole in the wall. That's going to be a concern <sighs> and that needs to be addressed. Right. Yeah. And that's to resolve any issues that may be having like, any what's going on like what, what's going on with the home did we even get that done we'll, we'll completely explain everything when that time comes we'll be in full communication the entire time okay, okay. um after that we're going to obtain funds for closing mm-hmm. so we're gonna have those ready to go and your lender will give you an idea what closing costs are going to be then we're going to close on the property so just because we close on a property one day it does not mean that you get keys that same day i want to reiterate that just because we close does not mean you get keys. The state of California, okay, has a law and it gives the buyer three days to vacate, the, I mean, the seller, sorry, uh, three days to vacate the property. Um, we're not done yet. So just because we close on the property, you don't get keys the same day, Caitlin, right. because they have three days to vacate the premises. So okay. you take, take possession of the home. So then you're officially what? Married. Yeah. All right. <gasps> so you, dun, 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 you marry the property, it's yours. Yay. Instead of a key ring. And you still get a key ring. I mean, instead of a ring, you get a key ring. Sorry. Okay. You're doing that. I said it wrong. When you guys talk to buyers, you say my joke. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, I usually go over like, um, you know, docs needed with you, but uh-huh. uh, your lender will explain this to you. This is a list of things that you're going to need. Like, if, mm-hmm. if, you know, you can review that on your own. I know you have to go to another appointment. I would normally go over this with you, but the market we're in is still standard sales. As crazy as it is, it's a standard sale. It means it's a normal seller that has equity in the property selling his home. Okay. We're not in a short sale market yet. Okay. So okay. you could, if you're curious, you can read through that all you want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is how we work. When we visit properties, client expectations. Uh-huh. Uh, I just want you to have fast communication with me, um, you know, and respond to things. Yeah. Really quick, I do want to tell you things that you do not do. Okay? okay. And then we'll wrap this up. Make sure that you do not do any of the things that may alter your credit and may risk you obtaining your loan. All right. Because these can put you in default in your contract. I've had it for someone went and um, didn't pay their credit card. Mm-hmm. And guess what? That dropped their points. Only 10 points, but that ruined their qualification. Oh, gosh. 
Do not quit your job or change jobs. Please, please, please. If it's likely, call me and call the lender. Okay. Do not allow anyone to make any inquiries on your credit cards. So sorry, Walmart, Target. Do not no. <laughs> sorry, Victoria's okay. Secret. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Victoria. Wherever you go, do not know. Okay. Do not apply for any credit anywhere except with okay. your lender, okay? So even though they're offering like 50% off, I don't care. <laughs> you don't need it. All right. Wait till after you buy a house. The house. <laughs> yes. So do not change bank accounts or transfer any money. Okay. And I'm talking about don't transfer money within accounts. You know, sometimes we'll transfer from savings. Avoid movement because it like notifies the bank and it looks sketchy. It, so it I have, um, so what I do is I pay my like credit card bill by transferring money from my checking to my credit card. Should I avoid that during this time? No, I mean, you can still pay your credit card. That okay. doesn't count. I, I'm, I'm worried more about accounts, like from savings like to transferring checking. from checking to savings. Yeah, to savings. That's more what I care about. I want you okay. to pay your credit card 100%. But 100, like, I'm talking about like even spending 25 bucks to Starbucks and transferring it there over. Okay. Like, avoid doing that because it makes you look a little irresponsible with money. I do it all the time, though, because I just like forget. I'm like, oh my God, like I accidentally inputted that in my savings. So. But I'm at better though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just during this, and just you can go back to that. Just during this process, let's let's avoid that. Okay. Do not co-sign for anyone. I don't care if it's your cousin, your uncle, your boyfriend, your spouse. Do not co-sign for anyone. Okay. During this time. All right. And do not wait longer than the time given. Mm -hmm. Write all necessary paperwork. Okay. All right. And that's pretty much it. Make sure that you do keep all accounts current. Do contact your lender and me to make payments on time. And do return phone calls, okay? Please be adamant with phone calls. We already had that conversation. Yeah. All right. And this is just some more like you can read this on your own. I'm going to respect that you have to go. But basically the point of this is that I wanted you to understand the home buying process. I'm not going to be like a typical realtor that gets excited that you're pre-qualified and then says, let's go, let's go view homes. Mm -hmm. And then what that, that's going to cause a lot of issues and needy clients. No offense, I like that. You can be needy with me. I don't mind. Yeah. I'm just saying it just sucks when you feel lost. Like, I don't yeah. like feeling lost in my job in any aspect. And so I, I'm sure you don't want to feel the same. You so, know, before this, it felt like a very overwhelming process. And I wasn't really sure what to get yeah. in, what I was getting into. But you've really explained it very well. And I love that I have this to refer to. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I'm excited to get started looking at houses. I'm excited. So I'm going to go ahead and email this to you in that email. I'm going to put my lender's information. Mm -hmm. We also have Keller Mortgage, which is a zero down uh, $1,000 credit back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, a free loan, oh. $1,000 credit back to you. Uh, you can get both options, um, but for your situation, it seems like you have like a little bit of job shape changing and shifting. Mm -hmm. Tano will get you qualified. Okay. Love that. <laughs> That's so situation, awesome. Okay. Yeah, because I just started with this great company, and I, I plan on sticking around. So, but it's it yeah. hasn't been very long. But yeah, and if, but it's buy. similar. It's similar career fields to what you did before. So we're gonna uh, Tano could like properly explain that to you and work with you. Okay. Awesome. Um, so after that, I'm gonna send you his information, send you this packet. Like I said, we're gonna start dating. I'm gonna send you the Tinder of all apps right now. Awesome. Start swiping at home. Swipe left. <laughs> all right, then we'll start going on dates with the homes. <laughs> ask, ask to be committed, get engaged, do our due diligence, and then hopefully give you a key ring at the end of all of this, okay? Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, and I hope you have a great day. Call me if you need any questions, and let me stop sharing. I'm sorry, let me stop sharing this to see your face again. Hey, happy buyer. There you go.